chapter 15. We're going to start reading in verse number 11. Luke 15, verse 11. He says, uh, the Word of God says, And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed, his swine, to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. And am no, am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they begin to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and when he came and drew nigh into the house, he heard the music and dancing, and called one of the servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid, and I, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as he... As soon as this son, this thy son is come, which has devoured thy living with harlots, and hath killed, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost, and is found. I'm going to preach this morning on a certain man, a certain man. The Lord doesn't give his name, doesn't give his occupation. We don't even know if the man's wife was still alive. But God says there in verse 11, a certain man. You know, we're not here this morning because today is Father's Day. But I am thankful that today is a day that we honor fathers. And we have a good group of men in this church that happen to be fathers. And especially considering the fathers today, these fellows are great fathers. And the greatest thing any father can do is to provide for his children physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Right. A good father will make sure that the souls of his children are taken care of, just as their bodies. And he does his best to make sure that his children accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. And when it comes to emotional issues, certainly a mother is better equipped uh, to take care of of things like that for the children. She's more suited for the job because most fathers cause emotional issues. <laughs> most fathers are wired pretty much the same way that I've found, you know, we're all pretty much the same way. Most men are, but very seldom will a father or a man stop and ask directions. Very seldom, and they're not very eager to hand over the keys of their truck to anybody. And they really don't trust their children uh, just to hand money over to them uh, that they haven't learned and they're lazy kids. And a father doesn't like to just pour out money to kids like that. He doesn't, even if it's his own kids, he doesn't want to do it. Most fathers I know, uh, doesn't, they don't like a fuss being made over them on birthdays and anniversaries and Father's Day and stuff like that. You see, a father, is a, he's a practical creature. He's a practical creature. And uh, his hope is that the children will grow up and be a success 
Uh, so much of a success that in his old age, they'll buy him a new car or a new house or something like that. I'm talking about good fathers. I'm glad to know some good fathers. Do you realize that there are approximately 20 million children in this country that have been abandoned by their fathers? That's only 10 million shy of the whole population of Canada. 20 million children have had to grow up without fathers. These fathers can't be there because, as the Bible says, they've lost, they have no natural affection toward their children. They just want to have kids. They think it's manly just to be able to have kids. Just being able to have kids doesn't make you a good father. And God doesn't say much about this certain man. But we know nothing of his extended family. As I said, we don't even know if his wife is still living. But one thing we do know, we do know that he had two sons. He had two sons. And God tells us nothing of his occupation. God doesn't tell us how he provides for his family. But we know that he does. He provides food. He provides clothing. He provides work. And he provides a home for these boys to come to. God even leaves out his relationship to this man. God doesn't talk about his own relationship to his man. Our Lord Jesus doesn't talk about that. He's taught. We know that this man has taught his children something very godly. Because the Bible talks about uh, this man knows that he sinned against heaven and in the sight of his father. So he knows about God. His father has taught him about God. He's taught him about heaven. He's taught him right. He's taught him wrong. He's taught him the things to do. We know this about that certain man. But this story makes some great preaching. But doctrinally, it has to do with God and the nation of Israel. And certainly it does. But yet we learn a lot about this good father in our text we learn that this good father, number one, I want to say this, he wasn't self-willed. He wasn't self-willed. When that boy came to him and said, Father, he said, I want you to give me my portion. I want you to give me my inheritance now and let me go. The father didn't stop him. He gave his son the right to choose. The boy came to him and said, I want to leave. I want you to give me my part of the inheritance and I want to leave. The dad didn't buck up, he didn't bow up, he didn't fuss, he didn't argue. He just counted it all together and gave his younger son uh, what he wanted. He gave his son the right to choose. Would to God that under the right leadership, we could give our sons the right to choose. Obviously, uh, this young man was old enough to decide for himself and his father respected him as a man. And he held nothing back from his son. He gave him what he wanted. He gave him what he wanted. You know, that's hard to do sometimes. You know, <clears throat> that boy didn't have anything that wasn't his father's. And children seem to forget this, that everything that they have comes from their mom and dad. Everything that they have, they are beholden to mom and dad for it. And you need to remember that, kids. You need to remember that everything you've got Everything you hope to have comes from your mom and dad because they love you. And they want you to have the best that you can have. But one of the hard things for a man, it was for me, I'll just, the Bible says confess your faults. One of the hard things for me to do, especially when it came to my oldest son, was to let him go. Let him go. It was hard for me to let go. I'd raised the boy. I had, I had helped him in every decision that he ever made. I'd talked to him and and tried to get him to understand, to do right, and all these things. But when it came time to go, I didn't want to let go. It's hard to let go. It's hard for a father to let go. But the right thing to do when a young man reaches a certain age is to let him go. Let him make his own decisions. You've taught him. You're not going to teach him anymore. You've done all you can. You've tried to help him. You've tried to show him the right way. Now it's up to him. Now it's up to him. But it was sure hard for me. And the, the dad, as you'll notice there, didn't begrudge that young boy's decision. He didn't fuss with him, didn't argue with him, didn't gripe at him, didn't 
yell at him. He let him do what he wanted to do. Even though he knew it wasn't good, he let the boy do what he wanted to do. And sometimes you have to do that. You can't be self-willed. You have to let the boy go. Let the girl go. Another thing about that father, we, he wondered what the world held in store for his son. You know, one thing I knew when my kids came up, I knew that out there was a wild, wild world. I knew that world didn't care about God, didn't care about Jesus Christ, didn't care about the Bible. I knew that I was sending them out into a place that was dark and nasty. And I knew that if, uh, if their training and their raising didn't protect them and the Lord Jesus Christ didn't hover over them, they'd be in great trouble. He wondered what the world held in store for his younger son. You know, there are circumstances in life that will cause a, a kid, a child, to need their father. A lot of things come up. You know, kids like to go out and create their own adventures, but you know what happens in adventures? These kids go out and they have their own adventures, and then life happens. Life shows up. Not everything is fun and joy and happiness out there, folks. It's not all joy and pleasant things. These kids think they're going into an exciting world, and it is exciting. It is exciting, but what they find out after they've been out there a little while, that life has some things in store for them that aren't very pleasant. And when those circumstances happen to a child... There's a need for a father. Man proposes, God disposes. Man has plans, but God has other plans. He wondered what this world would do to his younger son. You know, worldliness will bring a man low, and it'll bring a man uh, to need his father. And that's when he needs his father the most, is when the world shows its ugly head. The world will leave you with nothing, young people. It will leave you with nothing. But this boy remembered the generosity. After he got out there and things didn't go his way, after he got out there and he lost all his money and lost all his friends, you lose all your money, you lose all your friends, right? He lost all his friends because he lost all his money. And he ends up working for somebody out there that was from the land that had some hogs that needed to be fed. And he goes out and he feeds these hogs and he's standing there feeding these hogs. And all of a sudden he comes to himself. He said, man, he said, my dad has all kinds of servants working for him and they're eating good bread and they're doing right things. He said, what am I standing here feeding these hogs for? Sometimes kids do that. Sometimes children do that. They just keep on keeping on. And don't realize all they need to do is just go back home. Go back home. Do you realize, Christian, that when you get out of the way and you get away from the Lord and you start doing your own thing and you start doing what you want to do and you find out it's not so pleasant, what you need to realize and understand completely is that God is still on the throne and He still loves you and He still cares for you and He's got many servants that He's taken care of and He'll take care of you. This boy remembered the generosity of his father. You know, we should be reminded of God's grace and his provisions for us. Whenever you get to thinking that that you're having such a rough time, you remember from time to time how good God's been to you. God's been very good to you, been very good to me. He's provided for me everything I have is because of the Lord. Everything. Everything that I am, everything that I hope to be is absolutely because of the Lord. And you're in the same ship. The Lord is never far from us. Just like this certain man. He lets his boy go. He doesn't hold on to him. He doesn't doesn't try to stop him. He lets him go. But deep in that boy's heart, deep in that boy's mind, he knows that his daddy is still there. And when you get out and you get away from God, you remember this. The Lord is still there. 
This certain man waited for repentance. He wanted his son to want his fellowship. Did you know that about the Father and you and me? The Lord wants us to want Him. Do you realize that's why He created man? He had angels and seraphim, seraphim and cherubim. They all worshipped Him. But you know what He did? He created man and you know what He gave man? He gave man a free will. And that man can take his free will and worship God or he cannot worship God. It's up to him. And God created a group of, of His creation. He created man, and when He created man, He put him in free will, and that man can turn to God or he can reject God. You know what, you know what we do? We take our free will, and we free, by free will, we worship the Lord. We decide in our own hearts and our own mind. We're not robots. God didn't create robots. God created us, and we have a free will to worship Him or not worship Him. And that's a great thing about man. The angels worship him. The cherubim worship him. The seraphim worship him. But God created man and gave him free will. That's what this dad wanted, this certain man. This is what he wanted. He wanted his boy to want to be there. He wanted his boy to want to be with him. That's what he wanted. Every child that I know somewhere down the line needs his father. When my boy was alive, every now and again I'd get a phone call from him. He said, Dad, I've got to ask you a question. I need you to tell me something, Dad. I've got to ask you a question. My daughter still does it to this day. Dad, I've got to ask you a question. Every now and again a child needs their father. He hoped that his son's memories of home would bring him back. This certain man wished for a homecoming. He let the boy go, but he wanted him to come back. But he wanted him to come back of his own free will. God's not going to make you do anything. Isn't that great? If I were God, I'd start making everybody get saved. But that's not the way He created us. You know, if I thought busting somebody in the nose would get them saved, I'd go around busting people in the nose, wouldn't you? I'd just walk around hitting everybody right in the nose and watch them get saved. But that's not the way God did it. God put in man's heart the ability to either accept Him or reject Him. You have to understand what a great, great thing that is. God's put it in your heart, the ability to accept Him or reject Him, to come home or stay away. This certain man was waiting on a homecoming. He was hoping someday that the boy would remember home and want to come back. He longed for his son's return. Look at verse 20 there. He said, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Now it doesn't say this, but you can infer this. You can, you can say that though he wasn't out looking for him, but every day, I bet you every day, that that old man, that certain man went out and he looked down that road every day to see if his boy was coming back. You say, why do you think that's what happened? Because when he was a great way off, his father saw him. He must have been looking for him. The Lord is always looking for us. He's always looking for us to come back. He's always wanting for us to come back. Now this certain man, he was looking for his son. The text insinuates that his father was looking out the road for his wayward son. He was wanting him to come back. We don't know how long the boy was gone. It could have been gone a week, could have been gone two weeks, could have been gone a month, could have been gone many years. We don't know. But I believe that old dad, that certain man, walked by that road every day and he looked down that road hoping to see his son coming. You know, I know that I always enjoy seeing my kids come. 
come back home. I always enjoy seeing them come. I enjoy seeing them go. <laughs> but I do enjoy seeing them come. And you know what happens this? I think the old dad came by that roadside every day and he just stopped and looked down that road every day to see if he could see his boy coming. And then one day he looked down the road and nobody had to tell him who that, that, that young man was a long way off. But the dad knew his step. He knew what he looked like. He knew how he walked. He knew everything. He knew that that figure way down the road was his son. You know, the Lord knows everything about you. He knows everything about you. He knows where you're at. Another thing about this certain man, he wiped the slate clean. Now, wouldn't you take an offense if your son came up to you and say, I want you to give me my inheritance right now where I can use it? I want you to give me my inheritance right now and I want to leave home. Don't want to be around you anymore. I want to get out of here. I want you to give me my part of the inheritance. That would have been a, a crushing blow. That would have hurt the father. I guarantee you that certain man had some pains because of what his younger son had done to him. But that certain man, when that boy shows back up, you know what that man does? He wipes the slate clean. He's willing to forget and to forgive. Notice the first word in verse 22. Well, in verse 21, the Bible says, And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Now notice the next word. But, but, the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Kill the fatted calf. You know what the Lord did when that boy shows back up? He just wipes the slate clean. You know, when you get away from God and you start sinning against the Lord and, and you break away from the Lord and you backslide and you're out there for a while, who knows how long you're out there. But I can tell you this, if you're willing, God is willing. And God is willing to forgive your sins and cleanse you from every wicked thing. God is willing to wipe the slate clean. And that's what he wants to do. But, you see, that boy had it all planned out in his mind how it was going to go. And when he got back there, he thought the father might uh, not want to do that and want, might make him a hired servant. He thought that's the way it goes. Why did he think that? Because that's what he deserved. That's what the boy deserved. He deserved the backside of his father. He deserved his father to say, yeah, well, you can sleep with the servants and you can do that. And I'll treat you just like a servant and that's the way it'll be. You already spent your money and uh, just you can be one of my servants and that's it. But the Bible says, but this certain man said, wait a minute. I don't want to hear that. You know what the Lord said over there in 1 John chapter 1? He said, if we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The Lord said, I want to I wipe the slate clean. Amen. Let's start over again. Isn't that a wonderful thing about Christianity? Isn't that, wonderful, isn't that a wonderful thing about being a child of God? At any moment in time in your life, you can, you can go to the Lord and you can confess your sins and everything is done away with. And you can start afresh. That boy didn't expect this. But that certain man, he loved his son. He loved his son. And he wiped the slate clean. You see, he didn't mention his departure. He didn't say, well, I remember when you left now. I said, I remember when you left. We didn't leave on very good terms. And he didn't do that, did he? All he talked about was the boy's return. The Lord's not interested in the past. The Lord is interested in the present and the future. You put the past under the blood, and then you can go forward. 
That's what the Lord's interested. You know, this is what G Jesus Christ did with Peter over there in John chapter 21. Peter had cursed and he'd swore that he didn't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Cursed and swore that he didn't know Jesus Christ. And when Jesus goes to him, the Lord never mentions that. He never says one word about it. He says, Peter, do you love me? Three times he asked him, Peter, do you love me? Lovest thou me more than these, Peter? Peter, do you love me? Three times Peter had to confront that. And the Lord never brought it up that he had cursed and swore and denied Jesus Christ three times. The Lord didn't bring it up. Can I say to you that if your heart is really wanting to get right with the Lord and you're really wanting to get where you ought to be with God, that if you'll confess your sins, he'll forget it and he'll wipe it clean and that'll be it. It's under the blood. You see, there's total forgiveness after repentance. The Lord will forgive you after you repent. And then the last thing about this certain man I want to say, he warns the accuser. He warns his other son. Not even the adversary, though that young man was correct, not even the adversary can waver the father's love for his son. Satan himself cannot change the way God feels about you and I. When we get in messes and we get in sin and we get backslid and we get far off from God, the Lord still loves us and not even Satan himself can do anything about this. You read over there in Zechariah chapter 3 where Joshua was over there standing before uh, judgment time and the devil's there accusing him and the Lord shows up and the Father shows up and He says, take His filthy clothes off of Him and give Him new clothes. Set a crown on His head. He said, this is my Son. I love Him. I love Him. The devil himself can't change the way God feels about you. You need to remember that. There's no sin that you've committed that God can't forgive if you're truly wanting forgiveness. God will forgive all of our sins. This certain man reminds the elder son that his younger son is still his son. Now he's returned home. It's as though he came back from the dead. As though he came back from the dead. When you think about that, when you look at your Lord and you know what the Bible says about getting right with Him, confessing our sins, that the Lord is willing to put everything away. Make a clean slate because He loves you. And He knows what the world's holding out there for you. And He's not going to make you do anything. But when you're ready to come back, He's there with open arms. He's there with open arms just like this certain man. If you're ready to get right with God, He's ready to get right with you. Are you saved this morning? Do you know Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins? Your, your sins. And that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures? Realize the Lord says there that if you'll believe that with all your heart, God will save your soul. Now, if you are saved, where are you at spiritually? Are you right with the Lord? Is your relationship cool? Have you wandered away from God? We all do at one time or another. Don't you think it's time to go home? Don't you think it's time to get things under the blood and get a clean state? slate and start all over again. That's what the Lord wants. There was a certain man. We can all fit right in that picture. There was a certain man. I'm thankful for our fathers here today. I'm thankful for the fathers of Bible Baptist Church. I know these men. They want to raise their children right. They want to make sure that they get saved. 
But there's a lot more to a father than just being able to have kids. I'm thankful for our Father in heaven who loves us and cares for us and watches over us and longs for us to come home and have fellowship with him. I'm thankful for a Lord like that. What a great God we have. Father, I pray, God, you'll take this message down and use it for your honor and glory. God, I pray that you'll uh, speak to hearts here. To a tree on a hill far away.